Familial patterns, intergenerational modes of behavior that are transmitted and reestablished, both implicitly and explicitly, are some of the most powerful forces in our lives. Sometimes it's something simple, like noticing you're responding to aspects of your home life just like one of your parents did. And sometimes it's more complex, like recreating entire systems of dynamic dysfunction. In our Torah portion this week, aptly named Toldot, Generations, we are given direct testimony of this being an ancient human issue. This week's portion is full of anecdotes outlining the lives of Isaac and Rebecca and Jacob and Esau. In a way, each story is refracted version of something that happened previously in the story of Abraham and Sarah. We have a couple trying desperately to bear children, then finding that those children they are granted lead only to conflict. We see two brothers, very different in many ways, stuck within a familial system that pits them against each other. But most striking, and really the catalyst for this issue in the portion, are Isaac's journeys. The segment of the portion about Isaac's journeys begin with God speaking to Isaac and telling him to move to a place unaffected by a famine, as happened to Abraham earlier in the Torah. In God's speech, Isaac isn't mentioned as an important piece in the puzzle at all. In fact, he is told by God that his blessings and wealth are purely and only on the merit of his father Abraham. God says, I will make your heirs as numerous as the stars of heaven and assign to your heirs all these lands so that all the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your heirs, inasmuch as Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge. God's blessing to Isaac may actually be the opposite, a curse, or perhaps a challenge. Isaac being told that he is merely a vessel inheriting his father's legacy has his own agency entirely undermined, leading to him repeating beat for beat the sojourns of Abraham around the region. The most glaring retreading is also the most troubling one. Just as Abraham told Abimelech and Pharaoh that his wife Sarah was his sister, not his wife, for fear of being killed for her, Isaac tells a local Philistine leader, also named Abimelech, the same, leading to similarly dramatic outcomes. As a clear symbol of this retreading of Abraham's footsteps being a centerpiece to the portion, the Torah also says explicitly, Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's reenactment of his father's life comes to a head with his sons. Just as Isaac and his brother Ishmael were put at odds due to a birthright, so too are Jacob and Esau. Isaac's wife, Rebekah, seeks to push Jacob to supplant Esau as the inheritor of his father's legacy, just as Sarah did with Isaac. And Jacob, at this point, is also described in ways reminiscent of his father. The text relates both of them as tent dwellers and mild-mannered. On the face of it, this may seem like simple literary features of an ancient text, but I believe our Torah transmits deep wisdom through these narratives. The toxic patterns that emerge in Isaac as inherited from his family drive this entire story onward. They are the nameless, voiceless powers in the background, providing the entire structure of our narrative. Perhaps based in God's blessing or curse to Isaac, this is divinely ordained. Perhaps the very basis for the launching off of our namesake's tale of redemption, that is, Jacob, required this processing of historical family trauma to occur through Isaac's reenactment. 
The first place we see this matrix begin to crumble is when Jacob's experience diverges from Isaac's as he tricks both his brother and his father into participating in supplanting Esau. The first supplanting occurs out of Jacob's own volition. Given the opportunity to take advantage of his brother's hunger and impulsivity, he leads Esau to hand over his birthright for a bowl of stew, just as Cooper spoke about earlier. The second is at the behest of his mother, Rebecca, who guides him to trick his father. Both require Jacob to take action, even if he was uncomfortable with the action. And both focus on Jacob's coveting of Esau's position. This coveting is where the familial patterns begin spiraling out. Sarah, a few partioed earlier, says to Abraham, cast out Hagar and your son Ishmael, for the son of that slave shall not share in the inheritance of my son Isaac. We see this same impulse in Jacob's desire for Esau's birthright and Rebekah's desire to supplant Esau, her less favored child. But from here on out, the matrix of familial repetition shatters. The family is split up due to the fallout of the trickery, and Jacob is sent off to Rebekah's family while Esau goes off to Ishmael's family. The breaking up of the family is too a bit reminiscent of Ishmael's earlier banishment, but Jacob's being cast off is unlike Isaac's experience. It is a major shift. It breaks the old pattern. In the next portion, we watch Jacob process and deal with even further familial dysfunction and begin to overcome it. But that's next week. This week's portion provides all of us a moment for reflection. I know for a fact that I have implanted deep within me certain behaviors and reactions that I just soaked up from my parents, some of which are good, some of which do not serve me particularly well. And they too probably soaked them up from their parents. What our portion teaches us this week is that each of us inhabit precisely the same kind of matrix of familial patterns. And they can be a curse or a blessing. It is up to us to pick out the aspects of these patterns in a mindful way. Which patterns to reiterate, which patterns to abolish. Through this, we build our lives and the direction of our hopes and our dreams not allowing past problems or difficulties to define or break us. Through this, we continue the journey of our ancestors, refining that which we've inherited, building upon the foundations laid for us, and leaving behind the things that have only been destructive. May each of us learn from the trials and tribulations of Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Esau, no longer reflexively re-embodying the mistakes of those who came before us, but learning to grow.